here we are. Again, Lisa and Michael Save the World, and today we have a special guest. Yeah, oh, oh I'm sorry. We have today we have John R. Gilbert. Thank you. R. Oh, it's John R. Gilbert? Yes, aka the Zombier. Are we allowed to ask what the R stands for? Yeah, absolutely. It, okay. it stands for Richard. Oh, oh. Okay. so it's not anything okay, exciting. I know it should that. be a lot more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I use it because otherwise, John Gilbert is not particularly notable on its own. It's like a million of us. Try googling me; it's impossible. There is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there is a lot of John Gilberts. <laughs> oh, so it's like a Jose Rodriguez. Yes. Yes. Or a John Smith. Yes. Right. Okay. Well, today's episode, instead of us rambling on about our influences and art history and art holes, we, from now on, when we have a guest, they will be telling us- It is us, all about them. I will ramble on about yes. art history. And it's art all about them. It's all about the other artists now. And it should be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what should we start with? I want to start with art holes. I'm intrigued because we were kind of discussing this not before. Not that exciting, but go ahead. And I want to find out what his, yeah, John, what his art hole yeah, is. Yeah. So my art hole is um, people who stand in museums and say, I could do that. <laughs> and I find it to be the most infuriating thing that I have, that I ever in encounter in art. So, um, and... Because it, it assigns worth based on what your perceived level of difficulty is in regards to the art. I am rage now at the photograph. See? <laughs> See? Now, my wife did point out, because she's a kindergarten teacher, and mm -hmm. uh, in the Olivia book series, there's a Jackson Pollock in one of the museum books, and she says that she could do that in about five minutes. But, <laughs> as she my wife pointed out, there is a difference between giving kids the idea that they can become artists and that they can do something right. because we want kids to believe that. However, if you're 46 and you're standing in a, an art museum and you see an Ellsworth Kelly and go, I could do that, that makes you an artful. I can't, I, I, I can't yeah, yeah I absolutely, agree. absolutely. And actually Lisa did bring something up about, oh no, she did because, oh, because I made, I made a little bit of a comment like that one time with the, Remember when the art history, it was like scribble scrabble. And uh, I said yes. it reminded me of like, you know, yes, yes, what yes. school kids could do. But right. I didn't say that I could do it. I just right. said a school ch a, a right. child from school could right. do totally it. Right, totally different. Yeah. Totally different. Because I couldn't have done it. <laughs> That's yeah. always my my, my re re retort is uh, is but you did. Exactly. So. Okay. There okay. we go. That's good. my art. That was Thank good. You so That's much. a good art. I've been very stressed out about it all day, so I'm oh. so excited that I asked. Uh, See, this is nothing. It's, it's, it, I'm man. telling you, it's just, <laughs> it's painless. Painless. Okay, so what's next? Am I picking all yeah, of them? Yeah, I want you to pick the next one. Okay. I'm no, picking all of them. Okay. Um, let's do, let's do, wait a second. There's only two. Is, pick one. Oh, art history. Art history, I, oh, I, because oh, this is really intriguing yes. me, and it's really <laughs> at the same time it's really grossing me out and making me gag. And I eat almost, I mean, yeah, you know, Michael, everything. please, for the love of God, what? What were you gonna say? Eat everything. Well, almost oh. everything. <laughs> 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 I eat a lot of things. As do I. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so let's anyway, so my, my art history, I'm going to here, is a show and tell. So it is this. It is Salvador Dali's cookbook. Uh, and this is a legitimate cookbook. That, cookbook that I found out about a few years ago and was very excited to get for Christmas from my kids. Um, and this is, uh, it has recipes and all sorts of weird pictures of strange surreal type foods of what might be a goose stuck stuffed with a pheasant i don't know um early turducken cannibalism so oh i missed oh, that, I missed I that. Really we were looking at the book before wait we it tells you how to cook it i didn't look and now or does it tell you how to kill somebody I, either way i mean it's good I mean, instruction how hungry do you have to be right i i think you should let tell 
so people some of the uh, ingredients and some, some of the, the ingredients things. Well, young find, turkey with find a good is not as, as exciting as some others. Crab meat with mushrooms. That's normal. That's actually making me hungry. Snail stew also no, sounds delicious. Not making me that hungry. No. Larded meat a la mode. I'm losing my Larded appetite. meat. Larded meat, right? Larded meat. Uh, I wish I had marks of tea there. It's some of the photos. Cannibalism. And, and, and does it give recipes? I mean, I the last person I'd go to would be Salvador Dali for... <laughs> I mean, I think that's the thing. He was a big yeah. foodie. Yeah. So, oh. And he was he was certainly one to indulge in excess. Yeah. So uh, this is all excess. Um, I, we found all these weird ones before. Now I'm looking at stuff that's all normal. Asparagus with nuts. Oh, that's what that is? Green oh, God, puree. Green puree. Flat sausages with wine. That Stuffed was... cabbages with pigeon. That could, I guess that would be a popular New York dish. That's Veal cutlets stuffed with snails. What? The snails are reoccurring theme in these recipes. Frog pasties. I believe it's past pasties. <laughs> pasties, actually. Pasties. <laughs> Anyway, Salvador Dali's cookbook, Le Dineo de Gala. That's awesome. Oh, so, God, he can pronounce that. Yeah. I'm impressed. So I Very probably cool. butchered it, but I, you didn't know, so that's It sounded thing. good to me, because I yeah. probably would have said less <laughs> dinners, day, whatever. <laughs> <sighs> Ta da. Okay, that was good. I'm if good. Anyone's, I feel full now. If anyone is interested in any of the recipes, you should contact, yeah, John. contact John. Certainly. The book, I'm sure, is also available from your local bookseller. Yeah. That would be actually kind of a cool contest for you to do. To see if I can make any of these? No, to see if someone else could. could. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll attempt anything, and I will I will try to eat almost anything, but I don't know if I could get all of the ingredients for these. Mm. That would be the challenge. The but. one with the frog, 36 frog's legs. 36, no more, no less. Yeah. No way you're going to find those, but anyway... Um, so we just, we did, uh, art holes, we did art holes, we did, uh, art history, yeah. we did. and, um, oh, so now we have influences. 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 Yeah. Do I need to just, is it, am I limiting? Because I'm influenced by so many different things. Hmm. Michael, what do you think? Whatever, yeah, we'll whatever, go wherever you want to yeah. go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I am yeah. currently most influenced by Goya. Um, Products? Goya, the beans are delicious. No, oh. Goya the artist. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. I need to be able to live. Listen to the This is not a joke. We need it. We'll decide later if we're going to edit that out or not. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so you're... <laughs> the the Spanish <laughs> artist, Goya, Francisco Goya, um, especially towards the end of his life, towards his li the end of his life, he was, um, he was deaf. And, uh, I didn't he was, know that. He was, yeah, I didn't either. Um, I, I actually was doing a little research uh, this week to trying to make sure I felt... Mm -hmm. Comfortable talking about it now. It's all gone because of what we've gone through. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, like there's some really cool, very dark imagery. Um, I'll, I'll give you guys. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm okay now. <clears throat> so, I love okay. Goya. I'm so. Glad. And I love. <laughs> To me, Goya kind of like is almost like a photographer in a way, where he captures a lot of historical scenes in his work. And he was very ahead of his time in the fact that he was doing much more 
realistic yeah. imagery. Oh yeah. Um, still not not photorealism, but like realistic imagery where he wasn't always just doing Bible stories right. and, and other like literary stories. He was really kind of depicting. He life. gives you the nitty gritty. Yeah, and, and it's, it's just, dirty. He's and not it's romanticizing it. And, right. So there's a lot of emotion We're in losing it. Losing him. We're yeah. losing. <laughs> Go on. <clears throat> so um, yeah, so Goya is one of my biggest influences right now, but I have I have many different influences. Um, What's an influence that might surprise us? Might surprise yeah. you? Yeah. Hmm. Um, Rothko is one of my favorite <clears throat> artists of all time. Right. Um, and while like in some of my work, as you can see behind me, there's a lot of spatter and drippiness mm -hmm. and stuff, which would make you think of Pollock or, or, or Franz Klein or, or an artist that does uh, more <clears throat> kinetic artwork. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Rothko. In fact, in, in my museum going experiences, the only time I've sat in front of a painting and felt really emotional was sitting in front of a Rothko. Really? Yeah, and just sat on a bench in front of this beautiful fields of color kind of thing and you just kind of oh. get lost deep into it. So yeah. yeah. We're you. losing him again. <laughs> Um, the artwork behind us was created by John, and uh, I always think of you as dark and intense. Why would you do yes. that? <clears throat> <clears throat> Buy that painting, as we say, get away from this <laughs> joke. <laughs> deep breath. No, I'm, deep I'm breath. fine. No, okay, I'm good, absolutely good. fine. Really? Okay, good. I'm leaving. <clears throat> yeah. No, I'm absolutely fine. But no, the painting. It's a little dark. Yeah, it's a little intense having this giant devil's head right. staring down at us. So there's actually there a, some. Yes, yeah, there is a story behind it. it. Um, so the t the painting is entitled Satanic Panic, and for um, a very large group of people who grew up in the '80s, they grew up in like a religious background. The Satanic Panic was a very real thing of of church people going after movies and games and heavy metal and all sorts of things affiliating. All of that stuff with devil worship, which um, was a lot of fun to grow up as a teenager in a church that felt that, um, as, especially as a, a, a kid who listened to heavy metal yeah. and liked dark artwork, um, like Dungeons and Dragons and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really just assigning satanic imagery to things where it wasn't. Um, and out of that came uh, the PMRC, uh, which is the big label that you see behind me yeah. there with the, the parental advisory. Um, and then kind of sprinkled throughout are lots of different little images. There's actually a nude woman here. There's saw blades here. Oh, so, yeah, that's those. cool. Here, I'll step out of the way. There we go. I didn't notice So that. these are actually, I dipped the saw blades in paint and then let, let, laid them on there so you can see the teeth. This is a woodcut I did uh, about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I did that in paint and added that on. There's actually a graveyard here done upside down oh, in the drips. Oh, yeah. um, and oh, then there's wow. a pentagram and a skull, all of these fun things done somewhat abstractly um, to kind of add some depth. But um, there are images, in some cases, like the saw blade, one of the things that kept coming up when I was a kid mm -hmm. in some of these rock and roll seminars was um, there was an album cover from a band called Wasp. Yeah. In which the, there was a cod piece <laughs> with a saw blade on it, which was was a uh, band, um, Wasp, incidentally, Christian's now. Um, but hey, what? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So anyway, so that's where all of these things come from. And uh, uh, I, I did this for a particular show, which um, was just a, a group show. And this was one of the first pieces that most of the people in that group had seen from me. So that's, that's a, a way to be, you know, yeah. really introduced to you. Yeah, yeah so. this is this is like a demonic, like hidden. You know, those, when we were kids, we get those magazines that had the hidden, find the bird in the tree and find the. Right. You know, this is like when a demonic hidden, you know, picture game. Yeah, it's true. Because yeah. I missed Can out you find on some of the Satan uh, in this. Picture? Yeah, right. Yeah, well, the Satan part. Well, crazy. Satan. Yeah. And what's in the upper left? That's a beautiful skull. It's a little skull. Yeah, yeah. I gotta think it was cool. So, me too. Oh, it's a skull. But yeah. So anyway, so this is this is satanic panic. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't know that was so that that term was real. It was real, yes. And it was <laughs> there were so many different things. There was uh, there were um, groups of men who were imprisoned for Satan worship that were not really Satan worshippers. Um, there were whole like there was a whole 
daycare, and I don't remember the yes, details of it. Yes, I remember but, that scandal. Yeah. Um, and then there were so there were actually um, even evangelists that went around from church to church and did what they called rock and roll seminars, where they went through all the evils of rock and roll. They played back masking. You attended them? I attended many. Really? Uh, yeah, I was. I went yeah. with church youth groups. Wow. Um, and uh, you know, we were often given examples of given examples of music that was would fall into this category, yeah. which was kind of how I built my discography of things that I really like listening to. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I was def I definitely had to be a part of it on, on an end of it where I just was constantly being told what I couldn't listen to or shouldn't listen to. And I mean, that was all from the church. It's not like I grew up that way in my own home right. necessarily, right. but, um, but yeah, so this is kind of the culmination of that. I also did a lot of research. I have books. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've listened to podcasts and other documentaries and, and stuff to before I started doing this and while I was working on it. So. That's great. That's, That's something else because yeah. I, I never dealt with anything like well, that. Well, because you're so. leaving, <clears throat> so it doesn't matter. Right. Um, but yeah. But no, I mean, because we never, well, I don't know. Did you go to church regularly or yeah. something? Oh, okay. Yeah. I went to Catholic school for eight years. Oh, yeah, that's right. And then I went See, but Catholic, Catholic and evangelical are very, very different, different sects. Yeah. So. But, like Christian but, but Catholics also had their little yes. well not as much when we were kids but I mean years ago they you know they used to tell you what movies you shouldn't go see yeah. right I mean and those were too. like you yeah, know this was from the third yeah but we're talking the 30s and 40s and right. 50s I mean what what movie was really gonna you know right. make you become a rebel yeah back then for sure. I mean, you know rebel without a cause Rebel Without a Cause. Yeah, those were a little bit. Yeah. Which, by the way, I've tried to watch more recently. It's impossible to get through it. Oh. It's the most boring movie I've ever seen in my life. Really? Oh, I, I just, just as an that aside. Yeah. I don't have an opinion on it. Yeah, I I've mean, seen it. I, I just like to look at Sal Mineo. Okay, well, now it's time to go. <laughs> and also, this is John's shirt. It is my shirt. This, <laughs> this shirt is by an artist that I know. Named John Paul Newton. Very cool. So very cool very name. Cool. Yeah. So, and it's uh, it's his commentary on uh, on Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg. Mm -hmm. ah. uh, on the back it says "Architect of Your Ruin." So, I love it. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. That's very. It, yeah. And a so, quick, at a quick, quick glance, I'm almost like thinking it was Bella Lugosi. That's what I thought. At a quick was. glance, and then I was that. like, no, it's not him. Yeah. But. It almost. Can I can I plug my shirt? Of course, absolutely. That's so my shirt that. is yeah. available on my website, which is thezombeard.com, um, and the shirt that I'm wearing is available through my friend's Etsy. He's there under Reverend Murder. Reverend, I thought you'd enjoy that. Reverend Murder. There you go. So. I want to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been an enlightening. <laughs> this has been fun. This has been a so lot of fun. Disgusting of. food, Satanism, Goyan products. <laughs> 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 Which I refuse to buy in the first place. Me but too. anyway, so yeah, I was just. <laughs> get through this. Get through this. I'm getting through it. I'm getting through it. So we want to thank John R. Gilbert for coming and talking about his <laughs> artwork. And you must check out his his artwork is great. His artwork is really really fabulous. Yeah. I have a Bride of Frankenstein uh, portrait painting yeah. myself that Lisa got for me, yeah. and well, I just you. absolutely love it. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Yay! So stay tuned. And um, we will be back with more artists. And... Yeah. Yes. I have nothing else to say. I'm exhausted by this. <laughs> Stay tuned.